there's just one place where students are students first. And athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. We are here. This is Alan Hilliard Sports with Coach Barkley here. You know, coming into this week, coming off a very close ball game. Can you tell us about the, especially the ending of that game? You had a big comeback. You know, uh, Alan, our kids uh, played a tough game. Um, I know the score wasn't in our favor, but our kids uh, played well defensively. Um, we gave up the big plays. Um, offensively, we ran the ball very well. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing that we took from it as coaches is, you know, we were down, uh, I believe it's 15 or 18 points, and then our kids kept fighting, and we got to where we got the lead um, late in the game, and, you know, Willard made some plays, and they made a made a big touchdown run late, um, I believe just right under two minutes to go in the game, and, um, you know, they, they made plays, and they earned the victory. Yep, and it was, I believe, the difference, and that was really – almost 300 yards of receiving for, you know, one of the receivers for Willard in that. But, again, it was a very good ball game. So looking ahead at this week now, you have a Neosho team who's coming off a victory over Lebanon. So how do you prepare for, you know, another very tough team again? You know, Neosho's a uh, great football team. Um, they've had a lot of success uh, in the in the past years. Um you know, they, they're very athletic. They try to get the ball in space. They give you some spread formations, but also will bring guys in. Um, so you got you got to prepare for a lot of formations defensively. And, um, you know, from an offensive standpoint, uh, their defense, you know, they got some guys that do a very good job of playing their positions. And um, we're going to have to be locked in and uh, have a good week of practice and be ready to go on Friday. All right, and then coming off a few injuries during the game there, any major changes this week because of the injuries or things kind of fairly about the same? We got, we got, we got one lineman that is actually right now on his way to get an x-ray done, um, so we'll have a better idea tomorrow on what his status is. But, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty banged up on the offensive line side and, um, you know, not just offensive line, but – you know, we're we're putting some guys, and, you know, I'm proud of our guys. Joe Machuca did a great job of stepping in for us uh, on Friday for a, a fill-in. You know, he, he earned a spot, and he's going to keep playing for us. Um, you know, even Jaden Braun, for two or three plays, had to go in and play a different position while we moved a sophomore kid to a different position to finish a drive, and we were able to score with them. So, you know, we had some guys step up, make some plays, and, you know, I'm proud of them. So looking at the way some of the, you know, roster changes are here with the younger players, always a positive sign because down the road that will help them, you know, next year, the year after some of them. You know, you're kind of a little leery putting sophomores and some juniors at a varsity level, especially in the middle of a game. Um, you know, in Joe's, in Joe's case, he's a junior and, um, you know, we had the injury on Wednesday. So Joe got a preparation on Thursday and a game on Friday. So, there wasn't a whole lot of, lot of uh, practice time with the ones for Joe, but, you know, he's a smart kid. You know what you're going to get from him, and, you know, we, we feel like we got a lot of guys that we can just kind of plug and play if need be. But obviously missing those guys uh, hurts a little bit, but um, next man up mentality, and, you know, I, I'm thankful for those guys stepping in and making plays for us. All right, and then on the defensive end, they also made plays last week. They had a very – you know, several turnovers that were recovered no, in think, favor of the Tigers. I think they created two turnovers, um, obviously big plays for us. Um, you know, we got we got to clean up some stuff. Uh, we ran around. We tackled uh, decently. Um, you know, they just hit us for some big plays, and a lot of it was in the past game. And, you know, we got to clean, the, clean that stuff up because you never know down the stretch how them outcomes will be. All right, Coach, we will 
see you two and a half hours away on Friday night there. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it, Alan. All right. The Dixon School District is a proud supporter of Allen Hilliard Sports and their coverage of Dixon Bulldogs sports, including baseball, softball, basketball, volleyball, and more. Be sure to give them a call for your educational needs, and if you have any questions, Dan Johnson Insurance, just down the road from the high school on the main street, is a proud supporter of Allen Hilliard Sports and has been for several years. Give her a call for all your insurance needs, quotes, whether it be cars, vehicles, you name it, she can insure it. We are Allen Hilliard here. We're talking with Camden, Camden 10 Coach Pitts here. And Coach Pitts, can you tell us how this last week went? You had your home opener, I believe. Yeah, you know, uh, we we took on Smith Cotton and uh, and really bounced back from uh, from week two. And I thought we played uh, very consistent, played much better on both sides of the ball. I felt like that the um, you know offensive line continues to get better. We were super um, super effective on uh, in the passing game, and we ran the ball better. You know, I thought that was a, a key for the week is being able to uh, be more balanced, not so pass heavy that we were against France. And so I was pleased with the way we played. Defense uh, really came up strong and, and played um, really well. All right. Starting 1-0 and oh in or the conference play against uh, Smith Cotton Tigers there. But looking ahead, you have a Helias Catholic team that has already put up 90 points this season. How do you kind of handle that type of offense? Well, we know they're very explosive. Um, you know, they, they, they scored in a bunch of ways. They scored 90 against um, Hickman, and they scored in a bunch of different ways on defense, the kicking game and offense. So we know that they um, that they can stretch the field. They've got uh, multiple threats um, on the offensive side. they got a big physical offensive line. So we know we got to stop the, uh, the run game first, uh, and then – and then be uh, poised enough to be able to handle it when they when they do put the ball in the air. Okay. And what are some uh, some of the key players last week that helped to make last week a success? And how uh, can they uh, help you out this coming week? I felt like uh, Willard Demott uh, played well on both sides of the ball. Offensively, he was able to. Um, you know, he caught the ball. We handed it off to him. He he put the ball in the end zone. Um, he he just had a great game um, from the offensive side side. And then uh, defensively, I think uh, Andy Diaz, a defensive line force, played extremely well. Um, he's uh, he's super consistent, moving wide screens backwards, uh, and and being able to uh, come up with a big play when we needed it. All right, and then looking at districts here. I know it's still early, but some of the numbers are starting to come in for where you guys may wind up as Lebanon kind of drew the short straw there with the COC. They're kind of feeling the back end of that because they're 0-3 right now, which is still a really good team. And then you also have Rollo, which came off a big win this weekend, along with the two Jeff City schools. How do you you know, prepare for a rather competitive district like that? Well, I, I know, you know, getting through our conference um, is going to help us be prepared. And, of course, you know, with the, with the regular season meaning so much in terms of where you're going to get to play on based on your seed, you got to be ready to play each week. And, uh, and these games in our conference are going to go a long ways to determine where we get seeded. Um, so, you know, a, a victory this Friday would, uh, would definitely help um, with with the seating and and trying to get those home games lined out. All right, Coach, I appreciate it there. It has been a pleasure. We will talk to you next week. Good luck this weekend. Appreciate it. Post Pawn Shop has been a proud supporter of Allen Hilliard Sports for many years and is a proud supporter of the Frisco League Basketball Tournament as well as other area sports teams including Crocker and Waynesville. Stop by, visit Dan for all your pawn shop needs, whether it be music or hunting needs. Dan can help you at Post Pawn Shop. Security Bank of Plast County has been a proud supporter of Allen Hilliard Sports for many years now, including supporting all the sports, including the Waynesville Tigers and Frisco League area schools, as well as some other events that we have done. Be sure to stop and give them a call if you happen to need some banking needs. They are a member FDIC. 
and a proud supporter of the area community. Once again, thank you, Security Bank of Pulaski County. Show Me Candies and More is a proud supporter of Allen Hilliard Sports and the Frisco League Basketball Tournament, as well as other things. Be sure to check them out on Facebook as they provide all kinds of sweet treats for you there. Again, thank you for your support from Allen Hilliard Sports. Check out Show Me Candies. When you drive a Chevy, it's time for a fresh approach and a new perspective. And find the Chevy that's right for you. Find new experiences, find new roads. Chevrolet. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Missouri Sports Network. MissouriSportsNetwork.com, where everyone has a home field advantage. It's time for a Chevy dealer's of the Ozarks Athletes of the Week, presented by the Missouri State Highway Patrol. We go to Bolivar High School, which really is not too far from where I'm sitting uh, right now. Bolivar head uh, girls volleyball coach Kyle Smith and our Athlete of the Week, Megan Howard. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs> coach, uh, first off, let's talk a little bit about the season for the Lady Liberators. Tell us about uh, how, how things are progressing, what, what's going on right now, and, and maybe some some folks you had to replace due to graduation uh, who's maybe stepping in and filling some of those roles. Yeah. Um, you know, every year you've got to fill shoes. Right. And uh, so over the summer, we had some people step up and get uh, and develop and grit stronger. And uh, man came out firing. Even by the end of the summer, we had some some tough tournaments we went to. And um, we started off the season with the Branson tournament like we have the last few years. And that's always just such a great tournament, great competition of regional teams in our region and um, ended up going against Fairgrove in the gold bracket and, you know, state defending champs and uh, played real tough against them. And uh, but we're starting our 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 non-conference part of the season. And so we've seen some tough competition, Capital City out of Jefferson City. Um, and then this weekend we go up to Rockwood Classic in St. Louis and the girls are geared up, man. They've they've been fighting hard in practice and in games to get ready. So they're. And Allen Hilliard Sports will provide Waynesville youth football and cheer with all live coverage of their home games this year. They have kids ranging from kindergarten all the way to sixth grade. Waynesville Youth Sports has been around for many years, helping to promote football safely and prepare the kids for football in middle school. Be sure to visit Allen Hilliard Sports as we bring live coverage of. Again, youth football every Saturday. The Dixon School District is a proud supporter of Allen Hilliard Sports and all Dixon athletics that are broadcast and not broadcast. Be sure to support the Dixon Booster Club. Check them out on Facebook if you'd like to become a member. Hey, welcome back to the show. We welcome into the show from Archie High School. Head coach Drew Smith. Coach Smith, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. I apologize about that. We just got off the bus right around 950 and there was a hectic swarm and I totally forgot to look at my phone again. So I apologize about that. No, you're fine. Coach, you get a big win tonight. Tell us a little bit uh, about the contest. Yeah, we had a good win. We played well. Uh, we kind of knew going into the game that we were going to win, but we kind of talked about uh, – no, going into a game, if you know you're going to win, it's, it's about how you feel after that win. Of if, if you played a clean game, if you if you played up to your potential, and you and you uh, and you did what you came there to do. So uh, that was our emphasis going into tonight. Um, and I, I thought we did that in all on all uh, phases of the game. We got a uh, special teams touchdown, defensive a uh, couple of defensive turnovers, um, executed well on offense. Uh, scored on the first play of the game, so it was a, uh, overall it was a very good, very good night for us. Coach, I know you had uh, you know a young man kind of get banged up uh, here earlier this year, but tonight did you come out of this uh, relatively healthy? <laughs> we did not. We lost another starter to a broken collarbone. Oh, well, I'm uh, sorry happened. to hear that. Yeah, it's it's been a rough start for us a little bit with injuries. Uh, but, yeah, the second quarter, my one of my starting running backs broke off a long run, got chased down from behind, and just one of those freak injuries where it was nothing dirty or nothing, anything like that, just came down on the shoulder wrong and uh, just found out that he broke it. So, uh, otherwise, we came out pretty clean besides that one. Who are, uh, who, who are some of the young men that really uh, played well tonight? Uh, Kale Snook, uh, one of our uh, slot wide receivers, had two touchdowns for us. Uh, he had a good game for us in the passing game. Um, we didn't really get to pass very much because we got it. We jumped up on him quick, but uh, he had a good game for us. And then uh, uh, my quarterback had a good night, uh, making some good reads 
uh, in the passing game. And also he runs the ball really well. So he had a good game defensively. When I had my outside backer had two interceptions on the night. Uh, he did a really good job of filling the hole um, on the run support and then also making good reason, get dropping back into coverage and, and um, uh, dropping back into his area. So he did a good job with that. So uh, overall, our, our defensive line did a really good job of dominating uh, the trenches and kind of making them one dimensional. And then the, uh, the rest of us kind of picked up the slack. So it, overall, it was a team win. Uh, but those are kind of the people that stood out a little bit. Now, with regards to your your district, there you're in the in District Two. Will you see everybody in that district throughout the season? I know you've got Osceola in the coming up this coming week. Yes, we will see everyone in our district uh, at some point in the season. So, uh, right now we're sitting pretty in the driver's spot for that number one seed. Um, after beating our number uh, the number two seed right now last week. Um, at home so we're, we're sitting pretty uh pretty comfortable right now but we got to finish and it's a long season so got the osceola indians next next week uh, what do you know about osceola osceola they're gonna be a tough physical team they love to run the ball um i believe they started to run a little bit of veer this year uh they don't have as dynamic as playmakers as they did last year where they had a couple of speedsters uh so i think they're gonna be more of a veer uh, triple option team uh the eight-man version of flexbone uh, so, uh, we're going to have to be ready for, for a physical ball game up front. Outstanding. Well, coach, I greatly appreciate you being generous with your time here this evening and, uh, congratulations on the win and, and uh, hopefully we'll get to talk to you soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. And again, I apologize about that. I'll be better next time. So, <laughs> all right, coach. Uh, thanks for putting this on. Hey, you bet. Congratulations. Alan Hilliard Sports would like to thank the Waynesville School District and all the people there for helping to provide with these broadcasts, providing the facilities and providing the opportunity to do these facilities and allowing us to be there. Once again, thank you from Alan Hilliard Sports. And be sure to support the Waynesville Athletic Booster Club. Aspire to be one is your local counseling service in Pulaski County. Check them out on Facebook. They're proud supporters of Alan Hilliard Sports. We do regret to inform you that former football coach Chris Lowe passed away this month in August. He was a former football coach and recently a coach at Reed Springs. We pray for his family. Team U.S. Justice Soccer is a proud sport. Alan Hilliard Sports. They have programs from elementary to high school. Give Coach Madrano a call or check him out on Facebook. Dog Patch in Dixon, Missouri is a proud supporter of Alan Hilliard Sports. They have breakfast sandwiches, lunch sandwiches, all the snacks you need, gas, whatever you need, check out Dog Patch in Dixon, Missouri on Highway 28 and D Highway. The score of any athletic event is generally forgotten over time, but the actions of players, coaches, and spectators leave lasting impressions. The next time you attend a high school game, think of how history will remember you. Choose good sportsmanship and help rekindle the spirit of citizenship. Remember, the lessons you teach today will help develop better citizens in our communities for tomorrow. This message has been brought to you by your friends at the Missouri State High School Activities Association and this local radio station. Alan Hilliard Sports would like to thank the Arena League and the Ozark Slunkers and the Kansas City Goats for all of their support this year and allowing me to do the broadcast for them. Those games can be found on the Arena League YouTube page for full broadcast. And then highlights can be found on Alan Hilliard Sports. So be sure to check out Allen Hilliard Sports on YouTube and on Misha TV this year as many of our broadcasts will be broadcast on both. Also check us out on Facebook on Allen Hilliard Sports. And to that end, we welcome into the show Nick's the head coach, John Perry. Coach Perry, thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Coach, a huge win tonight. Uh, tell us about this this game between the two Eagles. What? Joplin and, and Nixa. Well, we got off to a pretty good start. I think we scored 14 um, and held them. And then we had a fourth and one that we were going to go for it at midfield. Had a snap that was bad, so they took over. Defense held. Um, and, you know, we ended up, I think, scoring three more times before – halftime so we were up 35 to nothing at half and then scored a couple more after the halftime but we ran the ball really well um through it 
when we needed to. I thought our defense was really good tonight. Um, you know, it was just it was just a good ball game. You know, like they turned it over a couple times, which helped us out. And you know, I think our guys were ready to play. We had made a lot of mistakes last week, so we were looking to get back out there and try to clean it up a little bit. You know, but I thought our kids played really well. Coach, how happy are you with that with that defensive effort today? And and who are some of the kids that really stood out? Well, you know, very happy because we kind of got off to a slow start last week in the first half. Um, Webb City had rushed for over 200 yards. We just didn't think we played with the intensity that we've been practicing with. So, you know, they came out in the second half of that ball game, played really well, held them to zero points. And then tonight, from the very beginning, came out and played really well. Um, Parker Mann is kind of the leader of that defense. He's a safety, a lot like Spencer Ward. He's downhill. He's fast. He's extremely physical. Our corners were good tonight. Um, you know, was able to hold the wide receivers in check. And, you know, our front four it has gotten better and better and better. You know, three of those four are back from last year. And, you know, I thought tonight they did a really good job. I know I saw the stats at halftime and they were averaging about three yards per rush. And if you can hold somebody to three yards per rushing attempt, you're probably going to win. Coach, did you come out of tonight's contest relatively healthy? Yeah, I think we were um, completely healthy the second half. You know, went really fast because it was a running clock. So we were able to play our younger guys a lot in the second half. And, you know, I think we are um, completely healthy and we'll be ready for this um, huge game we're going to have next Friday. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it really just doesn't get any easier. You start with a, a Republic team that went to the Class 5 state title, a Web City with the history that they have, a Joplin team that's very good. And now you've got another state-ranked team at Car at, playing at Carthage next week. Uh, what do you know about the Tigers? Well, I know they were really good last year. I think we beat them 34, maybe 28. We were up 21 nothing, and they charged back. And, you know, it was a really close game. I know they have a ton of starters back. They do a really good job of coaching high school football. They, they play sound defense. They, they on offense, are just rock solid. They do a great job in the offseason, in the weight room. Their kids are physical. They're strong. Like, they're as good a program as there is. Um, so we knew – Going in, our schedule was front end heavy. Like we've played some of the best teams in the conference on the front end, but we knew Carthage was going to be the best team on our schedule from the very beginning because of how many guys they had coming back um, from a team that was, you know, pretty ended up pretty good last year. Coach, uh, kind of talk a little bit about some of the some of the things you do there with your podcast. I've 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 really found interest in this, and I know this is a football show, but this is a coaching show. This is a motivational deal talk about what you're doing kind of kind of uh you know prop up yourself a little bit with what you do well you know I, I i'm a lifelong learner i wake up every single day trying to figure out how to you know add some value to somebody's life to add you know to add something to my own life and try to get better and i've wanted to do the podcast for years because i'm a podcast listener when i'm in a vehicle i'm always listening to something and finally just over a year ago, I decided that, you know, I've been thinking about it long enough. So I jumped in and, you know, what's been great is this, you know, I've had conversations with some of the greatest people in the United States of America, you know, and from that, I get a lot of stories that I get to share with our kids. You know, I shared a story this week with our kids that I got from Alan Stein Jr., who was a basketball skills coach, had a great Kobe Bryant story that was fitting you know, for something that was going on in our program. So to me, it adds value to our program. You know, like it's just great conversations that lead to stories and lead to things that, you know, I can even use with our kids. And, you know, and it's been a blast, man. Like I've enjoyed doing it. Um, you know, I mean, it's, you know, to me, it's been a win-win. Outstanding. Well, Coach, I'll, I'll let you enjoy this one tonight, a, a pretty much a statement win. Uh, tonight, but uh, you're at Carthage next week, and and best of luck, and hopefully we'll get to visit with you again. Thank you, guy. I really appreciate what y'all do. All right, Coach. Hey, we'll see you at the quarterback club. Yes, sir. All right. Good night. Sure. Check out the Missouri Sports Network for all of your high school updates from across Missouri. Guy Newcomb doing that, and he also does a radio show on Friday nights. Keeps track of all the scores, interviews coaches. Check them out, MissouriSportsNetwork.com. 
Security Bank of Glass County has been a proud supporter of Allen Hilliard Sports for many years now, including supporting all the sports, including the Waynesville Tigers and Frisco League area schools, as well as some other events that we have done. Be sure to stop and give them a call if you happen to need some banking needs. They are a member FDIC and a proud supporter of the area community. Once again, thank you, Security Bank of Pulaski County. The Dixon School District is a proud supporter of Allen Hilliard Sports and their coverage of Dixon Bulldogs sports, including baseball, softball, basketball, volleyball, and more. Be sure to give them a call for your educational needs, and if you have any questions. We welcome into the show now the head coach from Park Hill Central, Corey Swice. Coach Swice, thanks for joining us. Hey, no problem. Thanks a lot. Coach, uh, boy, an incredible game last night, going to double overtime with Fredericktown. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the game, and, and we'll talk We'll talk also about maybe this the, those overtimes. Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you, Fredericktown's a, a really improved football team. Uh, you know, they, Coach Williams got there last year. He did his second year there, and they've made a lot of improvements over the last two years, so. Uh, kudos to those guys down there. They played a pretty good game. Uh, you know, we had to uh, battle the whole whole night, and uh, you know, our kids showed showed some resiliency at the end, and we were able to pull out the win. Tell us, uh, tell us about the winning touchdown, and um, you know, what was uh, what was the feeling on the sideline? Obviously, with uh, with well, that score. Yeah, you know, it was kind of a weird game. You know, it was back and forth the whole game. Uh, you know, no team got up by more than one score. Uh, went into overtime, tied 28-28. Uh, and uh, actually, they had a chance in, in regulation and, and tried a 47-yard field goal, uh, which is a little bit of time left and missed it. Uh, so that got us into overtime, and uh, we won the toss. We deferred. They scored first, um, and they actually uh, missed their extra point. So they were only up six. Uh, so we had a chance. We we went down. And we scored, punched it in, and uh, had a chance. We, we we really don't have a kicking game, so we had to go for two anyway. But uh, got stopped on our two point conversion. So that's what forced it to go into double overtime. We got the ball to start the second overtime. We were able to convert on that one, um, and then we ended up putting the two point conversion in uh, to go up eight. Um, they come out on offense on their first play. They actually score a touchdown, but they got called back on a hold. And uh, on the very next snap, we uh, Jackson Jones was able to pick off the ball and, and uh, solidify the win. But uh, I have to say, uh, you know, we put the ball in Jackson Jones's hands last night. Um, you know, he had 30 carries for us. A lot of that coming in overtime uh, to get those two touchdowns. So he ended the game with four touchdowns, over 200 yards rushing and four touchdowns on the ground. And, also threw for almost 200 yards and had two more passing touchdowns. So uh, he had a heck of a game for us. Uh, and that's just what he did on offense. Uh, like I said, he had the interception that uh, sealed it on defense. But he also uh, – we didn't stat the game yet defensively, but I'm sure he had every bit of 20 tackles on defense. He was all over the place. Wow, that's tremendous. Uh, outside of uh, get, getting a win, did you guys come out of the game relatively healthy? Uh, well, no, not necessarily. We uh, – you know, we were a little banged up. I think uh, Colin Holsey may have broken a bone in his foot. Um, you know, Jason Threckel had a knee injury. Uh, we were already short an offensive lineman uh, due due to, uh, you know, a team rule violation. So uh, we were really shorthanded, but, uh, you know, there's really no excuses uh, because uh, you still got to give Fredericktown a lot of credit. Uh, you know, they, like I said, uh, they, they did a tremendous job at quarterback. Uh, heck of a player, uh, have a couple linemen that are really, really good and had a couple of guys that we really had trouble with in the passing game, uh, had trouble defending. Uh, so they they did a lot of really good things. And uh, like I said, I always try to give uh, give credit where credit is due. And I really thought Fredericktown played a really good game. Coach, next week uh, you're at St. Dominic. Uh, what do you know about what do you know about them? Well, you know, I watched St. Dominic play tonight against Borgia. Um, you know, they're a pretty good football team, obviously, a class six. Uh, private school up from St. Louis, and uh, they are, uh, you know, they're big up front. You know, they got one under undersized lineman playing center, but other than that, they're really big up front. Uh, quarterback is, um, I think he's committed to play Miami, Ohio. So, so really good quarterback, some really good skilled receivers and running back. So, uh, offensively, they got everything going for them. Defensively, uh, you know, it'll be the it'll be the best uh, defensive front that we've seen uh, this year. So. Uh, our offensive line will have their hands full, uh, especially with a couple guys out. So, 
um, you know, it's going to be a challenge for us. Uh, you know, it's it's definitely going to be one of those games where we're probably going to see exactly where we are with the 2024 Rebels because, uh, you know, right now we, we, we have a lot of growing pains. We're, we're making a lot of mistakes. And uh, uh, St. Dominic's way too good of a team. They'll, they'll exploit those things if, if we continue to do those things next week. Hey, Coach, at what point do you kind of start looking at – uh, the district standings. I mean, tonight was a big game because it was a district opponent in Fredericktown. Uh, at, at what point do you kind of start looking at those and, and trying to put numbers, just run numbers through your head, thinking out oh, we need to get at least one home game? Yeah, I, I really don't ever look at that just because we play most of our district opponents uh, during the season, especially the ones that are usually um, the ones that we're fighting for those spots. So, uh, you know, St. Jen Potosi are in our conference. Uh, Dexter we have on our schedule. And and those, you know, looking at it, and then Fredericktown, of course. But you looking at it, those are probably the top three or four teams other than us that are in the district. So uh, most of the time, the points don't really matter. It's really going to come down to who beats who head-to-head a lot of times. So, um, so I mean, we do – you look at it just for – just to see. But uh, at the end of the day, most of the time, those things don't mean anything. Outstanding. Well, Coach, I, I greatly appreciate uh, on a night off, so to speak, for you, although you went out and scouted a game, uh, but uh, being generous with your time and coming on the Missouri Sports Network and, and telling us about Central Park Hills. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate all the coverage we get from all over the place. So uh, the fact that you guys, you know, do that from, from way over there, it's, it's kind of nice. Oh, thank you, Coach. And, hey, have a great night, and, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, bud. Appreciate it. Thank See you, ya. Coach. Perez Lawn Care is a proud sponsor of Waynesville Tiger football and Waynesville Tiger sports as well as Frisco League sports. Give them a call for all your lawn care needs. Why become a trooper? Competitive salary starting the first day at the academy. Full benefits. A career that can take flight. The opportunity to protect your community and to know that you save lives. Why become a trooper? to make every day count. Do you have what it takes? Apply online at motrooper.com. Home Plate Grill in Dixon, Missouri is a proud sponsor of Allen Hilliard Sports. Give them a call at 573-759-3210 for all your to-go needs. Some of the best burgers, grilled cheese, whatever you need, they probably have it. And we're happy to be joined now, Seneca Indians head football coach, Cody Hilbert. Hey. Coach, hey. thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Coach, a uh, huge win tonight, statement win, a conference, a big conference win. Tell us about that victory over, over Nevada. Yeah, I was happy for our kids. I thought we had our best week of uh, preparation um, throughout the year yet. I thought our kids really, really did a good job throughout the week preparing and, and, and to see them uh, – uh, you know, a payoff for them tonight. I, I was proud of them. Tell us about some of the uh, some of the standout players tonight who had who had some big games. Obviously, offensive line and your defensive line must have. Yeah, I was. Uh, that's a tough offense to defend. So I think it starts with our defense. Um, I, I think I just looked at the stats and we held them to eighty four total yards, uh, eighty yards rushing, rushing and four passing. So uh, I, I think it started there. Our defense got some quality stops early in the game, and then. Uh, we, we were able to, uh, I feel like, control the line of scrimmage, and that was the, a big key going into that game because they, they want to do the same. And it's kind of two like-minded teams that want to run the ball first. And I was proud of our offensive line and defensive line for kind of setting the tone. And then uh, we've kind of got three guys right now that, that can run the ball for us and, and, and start to our quarterback, Caden Klaus. And then uh, we're playing two quarterbacks right now with Brody Probert. Um and then Roman Miller, our running back, and and I think all three of those guys were either over a hundred or right at a hundred for the for the third week in a row. Coach, uh, talk a little bit about number one. Did you guys come out of this game relatively healthy? Um, yeah, we we were nicked up coming into the game. We we were down three starters tonight, and uh, uh, a lot of it just from the week of preparation. You know, you got to have a physical week of practice uh, to get ready for Nevada and. As a coach, you're always trying to balance that of staying healthy but getting your team ready to go. So we were a little bit nicked up tonight, but, you know, we kind of had that next band mentality, and we had some kids step up for us tonight and, and uh, did a really nice job for us. Coach, at what point uh, do you kind of start maybe peeking at that, you know, the district standings? I mean, right now you're 
you're the only undefeated team in your district. Um, do you, you kind of? I it? didn't. I didn't know that. So, <laughs> so uh, I haven't beat that at all. Uh, okay. Well, it's it's you, and then it's Reed Spring is second, and then Forsyth is is third right now. But everybody else has at least one loss uh, in that yeah. district. And we, we always just kind of keep the mindset in, in our conference. I, I feel like it's such a tough conference, and you just got to go week to week. And and normally, if you can get through that that gauntlet of our conference, uh, you, you're going to be in pretty good shape coming district play and playoff time. Outstanding, well, Coach. Uh, who do you have next? We've got Monette next week. What do you know about uh, the Cubs? Yeah, um, you know they did a nice job of uh, you know turning the, turning the culture around there. They they definitely have an identity uh, that they want to they want to spread the ball around and throw it all over the place. So uh, it's kind of weird for us. You know, we had to, to play play Nevada this week, which was a really really heavy run team, and then follow it by Monet, who's going to you know throw it fifty times. Yeah, defense. All right. Well, Coach Hilburn, as always, I greatly appreciate you being generous here with your time. Um, congratulations on the victory, and safe travels home. All right. Thanks, Guy. I appreciate it. You bet. Thanks, Coach. Right. Bye. I Excavating, contact William Alexander at 573-308-7635. For all your excavating, dirt moving needs, whatever it may be, give him a call. He's a proud supporter of Allen Hilliard Sports and the Dixon Bulldogs. The Bank of Crocker, since 1911, has been a proud supporter of Allen Hilliard Sports this year and the Waynesville Football Tigers. They have multiple locations. They've been around since 1911 in Crocker, Missouri. Member FDIC, give them a call for all your banking needs and other questions you may have. And we welcome onto the show Stratford Indian head coach Tim Hester. Coach Hester, thanks for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Coach, big win tonight. Uh, tell us a little bit about the game with uh, Springfield Catholic. Yeah, uh, we started off kind of slow in the first half. Uh, uh, Catholic did a good job uh, defending some of our uh, power game. And uh, we just had to open it up uh, in the second half, and our we run a spread offense also here. So uh, uh, first half we just ran two back sets, and and uh, they kind of stuffed us a little bit there, bringing the house. And they had nine in the box, and so in the second half we just made small adjustments, and we took off from there. Coach, tell us about some of the uh, some of the players that had big nights tonight. Yeah, uh, Ryder Ross, uh, our running back, number 10, uh, did a great job. Don't have stats for you yet because I haven't done them yet, but uh, but he had a great night tonight again. And then uh, uh, we had some of our uh, – one of our linemen went out week one, so we have a couple of linemen that's really stepping it up for us. Uh, uh, Christian uh, Monchagon uh, is stepping up in that position, and uh, James – uh, staffers stepping up in that position. So there's a, a lot of our lines really picking it up and, uh, you know, doing their job. And uh, Jordan had a good night, had an interception in the first half, uh, something uh, he's usually don't do the, the last two years. And he made some corrections and, uh, and our coaches made some cor corrections and we uh, came out in the second half and played a better game. Outside of, uh, you know, the linemen have been out uh, since week one or two, did you guys come out of tonight relatively healthy? Yes, we, we everybody's healthy, and we should have some of our linemen back from week one coming back. So we should be uh, fully loaded again uh, next week. Coach, you know, making the transition, you know, with the conference having changed, what, um, you know, Tell us, talk about that, and maybe some of the new opponents that you're going to have on your schedule this year. Yeah, uh, with our new conference, most of our teams that we play is, you know, bigger teams, and uh, we thought since we might be in class two, we might, you know, move up in some points if we get some wins. But we end up being class three, so 
Uh, so, uh, I mean, our biggest opponents right now that looks on, on our schedule is Reed Springs and Fair Grove in, in, in our regular conference games. And, uh, but, uh, we got Buffalo, so we're just going to take it one game at a time. And, uh, we got to, we can't take Buffalo lightly because, uh, they, they can probably do the same thing that Catholic did. Coach, at what point, and I've asked the coaches, you know, on previous to you tonight with, um, Cody Hilburn at Seneca and, and Corey Schweiss there at Park Hill Central. Um, at what point do you maybe kind of take a peek at those district standings and hoping you can kind of line up for uh, a, a home game or two? Yeah, that, that that's hard to, you know, you, there's, there's times I look at it, but I, sometimes I get caught up in it myself and yeah, we are looking like we're number one right now in our districts and it looks good, but I, I got to focus on one game at a time and, and uh, and just hopefully get to that point where we get it by. You know, with with Mount Vernon and St. James, uh, you know, Salem, I think even and Cuba being in your are the, these are teams that you probably haven't played. No, uh, we played. Yeah, we played Cuba before in in the playoff game. Uh, I think it was in two thousand fourteen, and then played them again in two thousand seven. Uh, so we played them before, uh, the, uh, what was the other teams you said? Mount Vernon, Mount Vernon. Uh, we have not played them before, I believe, you know, that will be the first one. Uh, but they've been, uh, doing really good in the last couple of years. Cox has really brought those guys together and it's going to be a tough game. You bet. Well, Coach, uh, as always, I uh, greatly appreciate you being generous with your time here tonight. Congratulations on the big win. Good luck next week, and hopefully we'll get to visit again. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you for, uh, Thanks, for Coach. Uh, having me on. Bye. Bye. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 290,000 participants here in Missouri who take part in high school sports or activities.